Hey y'all, over the last 10 years, the Oscars, and honestly, a lot of award shows, have declined in viewership. There are a lot of reasons for this decline that I don't necessarily want to go into in this video, and the Oscars have tried to make a lot of changes, one of the most recent ones being the return of a host. And this year, there is one person that is in the news for potentially being this host. Tom Holland. Honestly, Tom Holland makes a lot of sense. He's one of the hottest actors right now, both physically and in terms of career success. He is super popular. He's coming off of one of the biggest movies, not only just of 2021, but of like all time box office opening weekend. Spider-Man No Way Home broke a ton of records and meant a lot to fans. Like people are going crazy for this. And it's not just fans who have been fans of Spider-Man since their young days of life. This is also critics. Critics are speaking quite highly of this film. Then you get into the business dealing side. Disney, who is the owner of Marvel and also the owner of ABC. Disney's just, you know, a parent of a, of a lot of children <laughs> and they make a lot of money from their children. Let me just put it that way. ABC wants to drive up that viewership. And so for Disney to not only lend a star who would really drive up those ratings, but to potentially make a push to get Spider-Man No Way Home considered for Oscars. There's a four-year consideration campaign for the movie going on right now, and both Sony and Disney know they have a great thing going with them with this partnership, and getting awards to that is probably the only next step that they can take to further push that success. There's also the fact that this rumor has started spiraling since Tom Holland himself expressed interest in hosting the Oscars and taking that sort of next step in his career, which I can't blame the guy. Like, that would be a huge gig to be the first Oscars host after quite some time. I also think this is something that would please a lot of fans. Sure, I'm gonna watch the Oscars because I love movies, but if Tom Holland's gonna be there, I mean, geez, and to think that Andrew Garfield's probably gonna be nominated for Tick, Tick, Boom, like there's a possibility all three Spider-Man could be there and pretty much everyone in the world would like to see that happen again beyond Spider-Man No Way Home. But this, my friends, is exactly why I think Tom Holland should actually refuse hosting the Oscars. Let me put it as bluntly as possible. The Academy does not care, nor will they ever, care about comic book genre movies or superhero films in general. For the most part, they don't even like to recognize blockbuster movies or the type of movies that support Hollywood and those working in Hollywood year round. Sure, independent movies are great to celebrate and the Oscars likes to really promote those movies and sure can probably because of its prestige drive a lot of people to go see those movies who otherwise wouldn't but they do not care about the movies that you and i love as fans they don't recognize them they've refused to in the past and therefore i feel extremely strongly that the oscars should not get to benefit from the wild popularity of someone like tom holland and the success of a movie like spider-man no way home when they and many of their members openly speak against these movies when they are perfectly valid cinema that employs a lot of people. That really gets under my skin that these movies are very much belittled in the talk of Oscar nominations and that sort of thing. One of the major issues here, I think, is the lack of credibility that this type of move would give the movie if it were to be nominated for an award. For example, the Golden Globes, which you may have noticed was not on the air this year, was taken off of NBC because of a number of scandals against the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, otherwise known as the HFPA, the group of international journalists who vote on the Golden Globes. Now, they have been involved in a lot of scandals, namely the biggest one last year, was being flown to Paris for an all-expense-paid weekend trip by the producers of Emily in Paris so that the show would be nominated for Golden Globes. A lot of people kind of scratched their heads and were very confused by this nomination this time last year, and a lot of people saw it as an oversight of a lot of other really, really impressive quality shows, not only just that were popular, but that were made by minority creators and filmmakers that really deserve to be in the spotlight considering all of Hollywood scandals in terms of that aspect of the industry. But to me, I think if Spider-Man No Way Home were to be nominated in exchange for Tom as a host so that Disney and Sony can pat themselves on the back, ABC viewership can go up and Tom gets his own kudos, I think that really invalidates the work of a lot of people who worked on the film who this film should be considered nonetheless, if it's going to be considered at all for nomination. It should not come down to any sort of other way that this business is synergistically benefiting from having Tom Holland be host. It should come from the hardworking people who were in Atlanta, who edited this film, who were location scouts, who were the agents of getting Toby and Andrew involved with this movie. All of the different actors, those people should be considered when making this sort of nomination. And I feel like any sort of move forward with Tom as host and then a subsequent and likely nomination for No Way Home would then, in my opinion, feels like an empty exchange rate of some party benefiting from another, but the middleman getting 
left out when they've put in the most work towards this. Now, some of you might be saying, okay, whoa, 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 but I would like to watch the Oscars with Tom Holland. And I agree with you. Most people like to watch with an entertaining host. It's why the Oscars for most of its run was hosted by some form of comedian. It's a logical thing. People want to be entertained. They want to see a comedian who is able to poke fun at their peers while also still celebrating achievements in that industry. That's why Ricky Gervais was able to host the Golden Globes for five times because people just really like his approach to award shows. And additionally, beyond that just poking fun, some of the most memorable moments have come from celebrity interactions prompted by comedians. Before her fall from grace in recent years, Ellen, her Oscar hosting gig, was one of the most memorable of all time. The pizza guy showed up, she took a huge celebrity selfie, like these are huge cultural moments that have been ingrained into Oscars history that have been referenced by hosts since or just by any sort of monologue speaker or presenter on the show. So these are pretty important moments in the Oscars as a televised event. But when you really think about it, when was the last time you remember a comedy film, a film starring comedians, was nominated for an Oscar. Now there was Jojo Rabbit, which I say borders a lot more on the satire drama end of the spectrum, but sure, I'll give that one up. But then you think about movies in recent years that people really, really loved or that are pretty iconic comedic movies. The Hangover Trilogy, nothing. Booksmart, one of the best directed, best acted, most clever scripts, not a single nomination. I will say I tried to do research and I was gonna include Bridesmaids here, but Bridesmaids actually did receive two nominations, one for Best Original Screenplay and for Melissa McCarthy in the Sporting Actress role. And so sometimes you will see these movies be nominated. It's not they're they're completely ignored, but they tend to be nominated in categories that don't actually give a director or the film itself much credibility beyond one specific technical aspect or an actor or actress that did contribute and make a memorable performance that year. However, one of the like glaring huge omissions in my research for this video that really supports my argument here with Tom Holland, I think, is Billy Crystal. You know him from films like When Harry Met Sally, you know him as Mike Wazowski, you may even know him just from his appearance on Friends. The man is a comedic genius and a great comedic actor. He has hosted the Oscars, <laughs> not one, not two, not three, not even five times like Ricky Gervais has hosted the Golden Globes. He has hosted the Oscars nine times. And do you know how many Oscar nominations that man has? Zero. Not a single one. I will say one of his most memorable performances in When Harry Met Sally was nominated for Best Original Screenplay for Nora Ephron, who is a very well-known romantic comedy writer, and she worked with Meg Ryan on a lot of other movies. And so her script, as it should have been, was nominated. But Billy Crystal, the man who is credited with reinventing what hosting the Oscars means and looks like, has never received a nomination. Now, part of me got on this argument and this side of my criticism of the Academy and the Oscars ceremony after Craig Mazin, the writer of The Hangover Part Two, the creator of Chernobyl, he's the man behind The Last of Us adaptation for HBO Max, and he's also the co-host of a podcast called Script Notes, and he works with John August. Both of them are really great screenwriters, and I highly recommend the podcast if you're interested. But in one of his episodes sometime last year that I listened to, he discussed how Hollywood benefits year-round from the success of comedy films that support the industry and, again, provide jobs that really make people want to go see movies. Like, you go to see comedy movies. You rent comedy movies at home. They're uplifting. They're lighthearted. They usually star celebrities that you want to see. And the Oscars never really recognizes these movies. There's not really ever a comedy film that you see that is purely comedy that makes it in Best Picture. And I'm not saying it should be that way. And so after he was discussing this concept of comedians hosting the Oscars but not being recognized for cinematic work at the Oscars, I really got to thinking like this is a pretty clear and serious glaring omission of specific genres from the Best Picture category. To add insult to that injury, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, which is the organization behind the Oscars, so when they say I'd like to thank the Academy, this is that Academy, they have ignored the opportunity to add a popular film category. In 2018, this was actually going to be a category because the Oscars has considered dropping or adding different categories over time to drive up that viewership. But very quickly after this idea was introduced, the Academy actually decided to drop this category. And to me, this is one of the single biggest reasons why they lose viewership. The average American does not want to tune in to a four hour broadcast longer than most sporting events in this country to see some person that they've never heard of win a golden statue for a movie that they've not only 
only never heard of, never seen, but barely had the opportunity to see. I mean, think about Nomadland. I never saw Nomadland playing in my local theater, and you probably didn't either unless you're really tuned into art cinemas or art houses that show those type of films. And so, at least if a movie like Spider-Man No Way Home was to be nominated in either a Best Picture category or something beyond just technical categories like cinematography, score, sound design, or visual effects, then maybe people would tune in just out of curiosity to see how it's handled, poked fun at, or potentially win. I do think it would be a huge omission of mine if I didn't mention Black Panther. Black Panther did receive a Best Picture nomination the year that it released, so it was the ceremony of 2019 before the calendar year of 2018. And that's been something that I think Marvel, Disney, and probably Sony, seeing that, has been driving ever since. They want to have those accolades to their movies to in some way prove, I think, to skeptics or critics <clears throat> or any other director that the question gets asked are marvel movie cinema they want to have that statue or that that sign of approval from their peers to then say like we did this we make movies that are valid movies that are cinema that people go see that people like and that win awards that they're technically superior and i think in a lot of ways these movies are and always have been this way it's just that they've for some reason been completely ignored and i can't say that after at least 10 years since the first avengers movie came out and years since the original spider-man came out in 2002 two decades in fact that this is like a whoopsie on the half of the academy i think this is an intentional choice and i think the academy has proven time and time again that they would rather nominate people who've been in the industry a long time whose movies don't appeal to many people that don't make a lot of money that maybe have limited releases or are not just in general appealing or they want to highlight like really indie new up-and-coming directors to show off these movies that they think in some way are superior and i really do want to state in this video if it gets shared or anything i don't think that's wrong if that's what the academy wants to be then by all means be that but what i personally have a huge problem with is the academy trying to double dip or have their cake and eat it too they should not get to benefit from fans who like popular movies and blockbusters yet not acknowledge those movies at all and instead give awards to movies that that same audience that's tuning in for tom holland then has never heard of ultimately where do i think this is going to go fans hold a lot of power if the snyder cut is any indication or if spider-man no way home figuring out spoilers and finding things fans and the collective power of the internet has really changed things and in a lot of ways tom would make a logical host for business reasons for his own gratification and as far as getting fans yes to tune in there is a direct correlation between numerical amount of tickets sold and people going to see spider-man no way home who could then be hopefully directly translated into a target audience for this year's oscar ceremony while i have no inside knowledge as to how likely this is to happen who the host will be or why in fact they may be considering tom beyond any of these reasons i think it's a very obvious and intentional ignorance at this point on the behalf of the academy to try to benefit from fans by a quick win of having tom as a host but then still refusing to make any sort of changes that make that audience feel invited to that ceremony year after year after year again if tom's the host I'm probably gonna watch the Oscars. I'll probably watch the Oscars regardless, but I just felt like this needed to be said and because I care about the fans of Spider-Man No Way Home and just comic book fans, but I also care about the Academy and the Oscars creating a televised event that is interesting to people, I felt like this needed to be said. If you enjoyed this take or this essay or whatever, I would love if you liked it or shared it with somebody because if we're as fans gonna be subjected to whatever these big voting bodies decide then i think we should get to waste our opinions in the process i would also love if you considered subscribing to my channel because i really enjoy making these type of video essays that are maybe not related to one movie but at least entertainment adjacent and i hope you do too thank you again for watching and listening to me rant i hope you have an absolutely amazing day and i will see you in my next video bye y'all